Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I beg your indulgence and uh, apologize for the delay this morning. We uh, are having technical difficulties with our equipment and uh, we are trying to remedy the situation here in my house. The problem is in my studio and not in Signal TV. Okay, so today is February 23, 2023. It's Thursday. And our daily starter for today from Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it is done, okay? Uh, right now, uh, I am struggling with something uh, seemingly impossible within my uh, capabilities. However, we will do what needs to be done. Okay, so uh, that's a reminder for all of you. And uh, thank you for joining us this morning here on One News on Signal TV channels 8, 250. And of course, for joining us on Facebook or YouTube. And we will now uh, go to our discussions. We will have to skip the news this morning because uh, as you may notice, it's already 8.10 and I have uh, eaten up much of our time for the news uh, uh, fixing the problem. Now, uh, Gab, if you would, kindly roll out the intro video for our guest and uh, let's go to the topic uh, for today. Ronilo Balberan is Vice President of the Think Tank called Research, Education and Institutional Development or Reed Foundation Incorporated. Balberan also teaches economics at the University of Asia and the Pacific. Okay, Professor, good morning. Relax, relax lang tayo kahit na natataranta na ako dito. <laughs> good morning. Okay, well, uh, you know, we uh, asked you to join us for a short uh, interview this morning because the uh, government has, uh, well, President Marcos has uh, approved the Philippines Economic Recovery Roadmap for the next six years. And uh, meron mga nagsasabi, yan ba yung uh, medium to long term or short to medium term uh, development plan, etc. Could you uh, give us a, a short lecture on this? What is this all about? Uh, kasi ang overall na long term plan natin is ambition natin 2040. No? So this is contributory to that particular long term plan. But this is meant to provide as a short term, uh, medium term plan all the way to 2028. No? So this mm -hmm. should be a very actionable plan no? that will give us uh, some future uh, uh, future gains na makikita natin, no? uh, na mahahawakan natin, na talaga, ang sabi niya, tatlo, no? matatag, maging hawa, at panatag na buhay. No? So, uh, yun yung kailangan nating marating. And so, therefore, that Philippine Development Plan, and I encourage everyone, every Filipino to download that from NEDA website, so that every every uh, action that we have, naka, nakatutok tayo doon. And this is not just the plan for the government, this is the plan for government and private sector activities, initiatives to align to that particular plan. Okay, now uh, may mga plans in life, may mga plans for construction, merong plans for uh, for annual plans. Now, how, how different is this plan? Because uh, you, have to, you have to admit, this is nosebleed for most Filipino, even I don't know much about it. <laughs> uh, basically, ang, ang pinaka-difference nito is uh, this is coming from pandemic. No? So, ibig sabihin, mm -hmm. uh, this is a declaration and a commitment in terms of how do we uh, pull out no, completely our uh, our economy from the impact of the recession. So, our economy and, has grown. Yeah, but five, what's, the, what's the plan, Professor Balbiran, uh, uh, from uh, what you understand? From what I understand is talagang elevated yung target natin because kailangan mong bawiin yung na, na, na ano. So from 5 to 6% tayo siguro historically. Now the plan is declaring that our economy should grow 
by 6.5 to 8%. No? So, ibig sabihin, talagang expanded, accelerated programs, the government must digitalize para makapag-deliver niya because we cannot do the same things that we have been doing. So, we have to uh, modernize, digitalize, and upgrade all our activities to reach that higher level of growth. Okay, now we're getting somewhere because uh, you are one of those guys who were celebrating for calling it right when you said that the uh, economy will grow by X percent. I think you said mga 6% yata and you, you said that uh, you called it right and I commend you for that. However, uh, now no one's celebrating after two, two, month, two months in a row of uh, record-hitting uh, inflation and in the area of digitalization, the central bank, uh, the secretary of finance, uh, Ben Jokno, uh, called out the, depart the executive department as well as local government units that, uh, hoy, magtrabaho naman kayo, or uh, do your part, as uh, the saying goes, because uh, apparently the monetary officials have done their part in trying to regulate inflation and trying to hit the targets. Now, uh, what's your response to that? Uh, because apparently, no, digitalization is still a dream. Mm -hmm. eh, yes, correct yun, no? So because uh, yung two basic, two basic you know, economic uh, policy making natin is monetary and fiscal. No, si monetary kasi parang tali yan eh. So papakawalan lang niya, no? Hanggang saan pwedeng makarating yung ekonomiya natin natin ang hindi mag-overheat yung inflation natin. But mm. yung isa yung gobyerno, si national government, ano yan eh, tulak eh, braso yan eh. So kay sabi kaya sinasabi ni BSP, oy pinakawalan na namin, itulak mo naman para mandar tayo pare-pareho. No? So para mas, mas dumami yung production, mas dumami yung uh, at logistic services natin so that we can actually bring down inflation not from the point of view of interest rate and money supply, pero mm -hmm. for actually increasing supply and therefore, pag nag-increase yung supply natin, bababa yung presyo. This, and this, this makes a lot of actions. Yeah, but I, I was going to go to that point, uh, Ron. Uh, does this just happen after a president signs on the on the law or on the program? Does this automatically happen? Because parang, uh, who's in charge? Ika nga, no? Uh, walang makadikta sa local government units. Yung mga producers, manufacturers, and businessmen are all complaining na kamahal ng kuryente, wala tayong uh, mob internet connectivity, pagkatapos grabe ang corruption from Baguio to Hulu uh, in terms of petty corruption. We're not even talking about, you know, large-scale corruption. Yung pinaka-petty corruption na hulid up, hold up sa kalsada ng mga trucks etc well uh, kung talagang uh, kung hindi ka kasi sanay no sa isang bagay tapos biglang kailangan mong gawin yon talagang madadapa ka magiging nalo ka bigla uh, ubusan ka ng hangin no so this is where the plan is really really needed no so uh, matagal na yung mga structures of our government and governance mga 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 30 years ago, our DICT is just less than 10 years ago. So therefore, hindi tayo sanay dito sa nakikita natin in terms of uh, very efficient, modern, digital uh, economy. So therefore, hmm. when say, o oh, kailangan natin, kailangan na natin i-harness to. Ang laki-laki ng demand, ang daming pumasok na pera sa Pilipinas, ang laki ng ating uh, economic recovery kasi uh, tinanggal yung lockdown, ang dami ng tourist, domestic and foreign. Uh, guys, Puntahan natin yan, supportahan natin ang pagkain, ng lahat ng services. Tapos, si private sector, okay, pumunta. Pero si government, mahihirapan siya kasi may mga audit processes, may mga procurement. Eh kung hindi talaga sanay tayo all this time, all these decades about digital procurement, no, digital infrastructure, digital connectivity, medyo kakailanganin natin talagang i-jumpstart yung mga ganitong activities para sumabay yung government services uh, into uh, harnessing, maximizing the opportunities of this private sector commercial expansion of our economy. But uh, going back to my question, who's in charge? 
Well, may may declaration kaya nga may sinabi na uh, magkaiba kasi yung willing ka and capable, no? So, uh, I think uh, the, the president has already instructed since day one, I want our government to be very digital, no? Very efficient. Mm -hmm. So, no corruption. Of course, yung pag-respond mo na very digital, no, medyo uh, hindi it doesn't happen overnight, no? So, we will have to eh, for example, uh, mag-aano ka Uh, consumer protection uh, mayro enabled CDTI enabled CDICT no but how what are the legal mechanisms no for D DTI and DICT to really work together and deliver no consumer protection so medyo kailangan ng maraming discussion yan so, so merong instruction may in charge sabi ni presidente uh, Talaga, let's work together, maging digital tayo, talagang bilisan natin to dahil bumibilis yung ekonomiya natin. Pero again, hindi hindi pa sanay tayong lahat na mag-move digitally. Grabe, yung mga pipirmahan mo, magpo-procure ka, magbibid ka sa government, ang dami-dami mong mga pipirmahan, five copies, nine copies, yung iba pang uh, naiwan ng mga proseso, o kailangan mag-submit ka ng uh, CD. <laughs> so, uh, yan, inaabandon na natin ng uh, sana mas mabilis no and uh, the government is trying its best pero uh, sobrang dami mong papalitan ng mga policies to enable this and i hope no uh, mas shorten natin yung part no institutional capacity there's already institutional willingness there's a presidential directive pero yung nandito sa pinakababa which is institutional capacity that needs to be increased, to be expanded as soon as possible. Otherwise, we won't be able to actually uh, disburse the fund. No? Paano mo i-disburse yung fund kung hindi mo ma-procure? No? Binigyan ka ng budget, limited yung budget natin, but it's still increasing at a very decent pace. But uh, the, 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 the proof for that particular action is you can actually procure it and you can actually pay the suppliers, private sector suppliers, and you can actually deliver high-quality government goods and services. No, yun yung pinakamalaking challenge na pagtutulong-tulungan ng gobyerno at ng private sector. Sasabihin na rin ng government, oh, Medyo nahihirapan din kami dito Tsaka itong mga digital, mga infrastructure na to Data centers, etc. Oh, private sector uh, We have this policy Magkakreate kami ng policy na to Baka pwedeng mauna ka na dyan Kasi mas alam mo yan Aaralin pa namin So go Tutulungan ka na lang namin. Ano bang kailangan mo? Incentives, process, uh, facilitation of market But, but isn't, isn't that uh, strange, uh, Ron? Kasi pag, pag inaaral mo, no? Uh, ako, bilang ordinaryong mamamayan, ordinary citizen, I hear all of the economists, the experts, even the academe, they talk, they have forecasts. They all talk about, mm -hmm. oh, inflation is going to be like this, the economic growth is going to be like this, we're going to have these problems, blah, blah, blah. But now that you have a plan, parang you don't have a team. You have government officials, you have government offices, but I don't know, maybe nasanay lang ako sa private uh, sector, sa corporations, na pag may tinayong project, te, oh, Professor Balbiran, ikaw ang uh, head dyan, ha? ikaw ang team leader, okay, kuha ka na ng team mo, sino ang gagawa niyan, ito yung mga goals. People are talking about the medium uh, long-term development plan, the recovery plan, but We don't see what really is the plan. Parang it's a set of dreams uh, or goals. Because hindi ba sabi nila goals without plans is just a dream or a wish. Uh, uh, well, may may plan. And in fact, no, kung mabasa natin, very very detailed plan yon. No, so mm -hmm. I think uh, and cross cutting siya. I think uh, this is the first time na makikita mo bawat chapter dun sa plan. Lagi may nakalagay doon cross cutting activities. So the plan is not department centric. No? So this is actually now thematic areas no kung saan magko-collaborate yung yung government so there's there's that plan no i think the 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 challenge here is to to really no invite 
private sector experts no to be part of the team to be for government to be moving forward uh, in achieving these plans together with the private sector no in an increased manner kasi otherwise mahihirap ka pa mahihirapan ng gobyerno na kapain ito kasi dalaw magkaiba ng magkaiba ng capacity ang private sector at government eh. ang private sector mm. efficiency lagi yan eh results no pero pag government oh tama ba yung proseso wala bang corruption etc so hindi siya pwedeng basta-basta gumalaw kagaya ng private sector kasi yeah, ang, but, ang, professor uh, uh, correct me if i'm wrong sa philippines kasi and this is not about the marcos administration okay i'm talking hmm. about the last five last six uh, governments that we've had okay the philippine government is primarily regulatory in nature. Number one, uh, bantay sila, tiga silip, tiga check, and then collective, uh, collect, uh, <laughs> ano ba yung term doon? Uh, para silang collection agent. They regulate and they collect their, their cut, their taxes, their revenues immediately. Hindi pa nga natatayo yung kumpanya, kumikita na sila. Uh, should the government also, or has the government, the Philippine government, not any political administration, uh, taken steps to revise the nature or its internal operating system? Kasi parang kontrapelo eh, yung uh, style ng regulatory and uh, collector sa develop, sa versus developer. Yes, uh, I think uh, tama kayo dyan, Sir Sito. No? Talagang, kailangan talagang uh, magpalit ng mindset and ng model in terms of public policy. No? Kasi some decades ago, ang standard lecture for government is uh, the government exists because there are market failures. Ibig sabihin, hindi nagtugma si supply and demand. Pero mm. ngayon, kailangan palitan natin yung mindset na yon kasi hindi kailangan magkaroon ng market failure bago magkaroon ng government and proactive government. So, dito pumapasok yung dapat si government aside from addressing market failures like yung pollution, yung education, yung uh, public goods like roads, bridges, pero kailangan niyang pumasok as an enabler. So ito yung pinaka pinaka importanteng magiging new mindset of the government. Hindi siya yung bida. Dapat siya ay enabler. So siya ang tagagawa ng stage. So siya ang platform. So this is all about platform governance or government as a platform and dapat nako napakahirap niyan in terms of redefining no government activities, government investments into Bida siya versus tagagawa siya ng stage, tagagawa siya ng teatro at iimbitahin niya lahat ng mga performers at ang mga performers ang bida. No? So para ang magiging role dapat ni government o oh, oh, private sector, kahit medyo walang mali, papaano pa natin may enlarge yung economy natin. So this is not about curing uh, curing mga what's wrong in the economy, but uh, what's good in the economy and what how can we expand it faster. No? So, eh, papaano yun? So, uh, itong mga digital apps lang for government services. No? So, mm -hmm. may, may nagawa ko naman no? for travel app na ginawa ng, uh, ginawa ng gobyerno na nag-interlink yung, yung mga forms ng uh, mm -hmm. costos, ano, etc. Et I think we will see a lot of these uh, uh, efforts. No? Kung hindi man biglang nangyari, but in the next in the next 12 months. Kasi kailangan malatag mo lahat itong mga platforma, yung platforms. Kailangan magawa na natin yung stage as soon as possible. Otherwise, yung theater performance of our economic show will not happen in the next five years if the government does not shift its mindset from traditional public policy models into government as platform models no facilitating convergence interagency collaboration and private public collaboration yun ang kailangang mangyari kasi otherwise nako maiiwanan maiiwanan sa sa pansitan yung itong mga efforts natin na to and then sayang na naman yung magiging 5 years hindi natin ma, hindi natin maximize yung opportunities that is uh, that are being presented to us by our economic uh, potential so yung mga economic trends na to na nandiyan na 
kaya nga hindi natin maano kaya nga nagse-search ng todo yung inflation so demand mm -hmm. and supply yan so yung inflation natin uh, okay sige hindi makasabay yung uh, food production pero uh, one side of our high inflation is we have so much demand no so kay ayan na yun eh may may clue na tayo our well, economy is well, let, let, let me ask you about that uh, professor Do we really have such... Go ahead, uh, go ahead, drink it. Uh, alam ko, matutuyo ang kalalamunan, kakakulko ito. <laughs> But, you know, the, the thing is, okay, do, do we really have such a high demand or do we have such a severe shortage? Kasi, you know, it, it's always the food producers who are blamed. But uh, Finance Secretary Jokno already pointed out, You know, we cannot move forward if the necessary inputs are stuck in uh, the pier, in the ports, because customs is regulating or, or you know, slowing down the process, uh, checking, etc. So, again, regulatory, and as uh, I think you and I are in agreement, uh, regulatory results in corruption. And then, when you go down to the local government level, again, Secretary Jokno pointed out that You know, uh, they should, LGUs, should enable food producers or uh, companies to produce instead of imposing a pudpud na yung daliri ko, kakasulat ng column and kakakomment dyan sa kalokohan sa mga local government na, na may, ila, may alam ako sa San Jose, Batangas, nagtatayo ng poultry eh. Sabihan ba naman na kailangan may fire hydrant ka sa poultry? Uh, parang hello? sa tinubuan ako ng tahid ngayon lang ako nakadinig ng gano'n but stuff like this uh, what can be done uh, should uh, as we agree regulatory mentality should be shifted to enabler but uh, I was speaking with Secretary uh, Benhar Abalos last night uh, yesterday afternoon and again this issue about local government uh, code the devolution to local government of services of the national government should we rewrite that stupid law <laughs> well uh, so uh, nagmention ka na marami no so yung una ta talaga bang uh, grabe yung paglago ng economy yes no so ta talaga more than uh, 70% ang increase ng net additional income natin so ang daming perang dumating no nagrecover ang economy nag-recover din yung mga economy ng kung saan nagtatrabaho yeah. o OFW natin. Yeah, pero, so maraming, maraming sorry, bro. I'll be particular. Yeah. The inflation is food inflation. Eh. The, okay? The, pri well, the primary concern is food inflation. Hindi naman nag-double ang population ng Pilipinas in two years. So, oh, pero, uh, hindi, ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin, may, may part ng uh, supply kasi economics is supply and demand. No? So, yeah. supply, medyo, ano, kung wala tayong demand at wala tayong pera at wala tayong trabaho, kahit uh, walang production niya, wala rin namang inflation kasi wala namang bibili. Oh. Kaya, kaya tayo nag inflation ngayon kasi more than 10% na yung in-increase in natin sa labor force. No? So, talagang uh, nakapag-add tayo ng more than 4 million jobs. No? So, while we are talking about inflation, pag tinignan mo yung labor numbers, grabe ang increase sa additional jobs. Tapos, hmm. number two, grabe ang increase sa money supply because of this uh, uh, increase high, very high increase in OFW remittances. So, hmm. ang kailangan, eh talagang sumabay ng todo-todo ang food production. At hmm. sabi ko nga, di ba, hindi pa dumadating yung mga Chinese and Koreans. Hindi pa sila bumalik ng, uh, at the, at the levels pero, before the pandemic. So, 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 pag pag, pag dumating lalo, lalo tayong masakit yung problema natin. Ito no? sabihin so, naman sa'yo nung, ano, nung uh, onion farmer, eto, nagtanim kami, tinapatang kami ng imported. Sasabihin sa inyo ng magmamanok, nag-produce kami ang mahal ng feeds. Pagkatapos pinapasok ng pinapasok yung mga imported na manok at baboy, etc. So parang uh, masisisi ba natin? Can we blame the local producers if they say, we'll just produce for ourselves? Bahala kayo sa buhay nyo. Uh, naiintindihan natin niya at uh, uh, katakot-takot na hearing na yung nangyayari in relation to that uh, aspect. No? But uh, in a way, no? in a way, hindi ko sinasabing, uh, ano, this is in a way a better problem because we are trying to, we are trying to support a very high, uh, very high economic growth. 
Hindi ito posible, walang negosyo ang mga smugglers kung hindi lumalago yung ekonomiya natin. So ngayon, on your point on national and local government as enablers, no? In fact, kausap ko nga si Secretary Ivan Uy ng DICT no. kahapon, no? Planning kami. So of DICT Sa so, sabi niya, oo, oh, oh, medyo talagang bata pa tayo, but uh, the ICT is committing, no? Committing to be the transformation agent uh, uh, of governance in terms of uh, providing the, the 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 technology. Kasi nga, 'di ba yung dati mo usapan natin, eh baka naman pwedeng i-expropriate ni presidente yung lahat ng mga officers ng mga e-commerce platforms, lahat ng mga technology providers. Pwede bang dalahin muna natin yan sa agriculture, sa local governance, kahit mga six months. <laughs> Dito muna kayo ta i-transform natin yung ano natin, yung mga services natin na puro digital lahat para magkakitaan yung bumibili ng sibuyas doon sa nagpo-produce ng sibuyas para walang na stuck sa kung saan mang warehouse na nagtataguan tayo. So makikita natin lahat through digital platforms. So, okay. yan yung magsusunod sa atin ng ating mga problema sa pagsabay ng supply sa bumibilis na demand dito sa ating ekonomiya. Okay, well, I'll have to close it at that, Professor Balpiran, because uh, we have a two-part show today. But uh, hayaan mo to be continued ito ating uh, huntahan at kapihan sa ere. And uh, Kaya na pinyan. <laughs> maayos na next time. Thank you very much, Professor. Yes, sir. Okay, that's uh, Professor Ronil, Ronilo Balpiran, Economics Professor, University of Asia and the Pacific, and also uh, Vice President of the Research, Education, and Institutional Development, otherwise known as Reed Foundation. Okay, we'll go for a quick break. We'll be right back here on Agenda.
Welcome back to the program agenda. I'm your host, Cito Beltran, and there is nothing wrong with your uh, set. Okay, my my uh, setting has changed because I'm on an iPad right now. And let's get on with the program. Uh, next up, uh, we have a, an expert, uh, our uh, regular go-to expert when it comes to economics and government. Let's roll out the Betamax, Gabriel. Ernesto Perña was the social economic planning chief under the Duterte administration. He is also a professor emeritus at the UP School of Economics. Perña previously worked at Asian Development Bank. He was also a consultant for the World Bank, the United Nations Center for Regional Development, and the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, among others. Okay, good morning, Secretary Pernia. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, uh, Don Cito Beltran. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. And again, I have to go to you as my professor in economics and governance because uh, I came across the news item that the president has uh, approved the uh, Philippine Development Plan. And uh, people we've been asking have been trying to explain it. And, but the one question remains, uh, is it a good plan and who is going to implement it? What say you, Secretary Perny? Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good plan uh, and uh, the implementation is uh, really scattered all over the different agencies of the government. So it's a net. What uh, Ned has done is just to provide an overall, an overarching plan mm -hmm. which uh, cannot be implemented just by one agency it will oh. have to be implemented by all ca all agencies uh, in the government uh, including the private sector mm -hmm. including the private sector and uh, uh, non-government organizations so it's a whole of society plan really okay if now it's go if it's going to succeed then yeah. it has to be a whole of society uh, plan to be uh, course, implementation, yes. Of course. The question is, who's going to monitor it to make sure that this uh, very far-reaching, uh, scattered plan is uh, actually moving along correctly? Well, uh, uh, the chair of the NEDA board is the president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the vice chair is the secretary of NEDA. And so... The well, in uh, in principle, the overall uh, the overlord of the plan is really the president. But in terms of uh, you know the uh, day to day activities, uh, in terms of uh, uh, saying to it that uh, the plan is being implement implemented by the concerned by concerned agencies, it will have to be. Uh, uh, the uh, the NEDA the NEDA secretary will have to be the monitor of the activities of the different activities. Okay. Uh, uh, having mentioned the word concern, good or bad, what concerns you the most as far as the plan goes? Uh, well, yeah. Well, the many things in the plan are aspirational, mm -hmm. meaning. Uh, the 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 uh, hope or the desire that things will be uh, implemented in this or that manner. So uh, that is why it's it's important that uh, the different concerned agencies in the government, as well as in the private sector, as well as in the civil society, will be uh, incentivized will be uh, involved, will be concerned, will be uh, cooperating mm -hmm. with the other agencies so that uh, the whole of the whole of uh, society, the whole of uh, society which uh, is covered by the whole of the plan of the NEDA plan will be uh, you know implemented and will succeed to achieve its objectives and goals in the medium yeah. term. 
and Cooper, even in the long, the, lo longer term, yes. Yeah, it, it's all going to be dependent on cooperation. But is That's there correct. any particular feature that you really want to see prioritized or targeted so that uh, uh, things will move along? Because uh, everybody seems to have their finger in the pie. And I'm kind of wondering, okay, uh, what's in it for me, as uh, the ordinary Filipino would say? Yes. Um, you know, I think the first priority should really be human development. Human mm -hmm. development. Starting from uh, early childhood. Uh, in, in fact, starting from the pregnancy of mm -hmm. the mother. So that uh, we... We have children who are not stunted, who are going to be healthy when they are born, and when they and and uh, they they are provided the needs that the uh, nutrition, the health health services, and then the education. They should be provided mm -hmm. all those things so that when they grow up, they will be uh, able citizens of the country. And mm -hmm. even some of them will be the leaders of the country. Uh, so human development is very important. And, and okay. the sec sec second, secondly, social yeah. infrastructure is very important. Social infrastructure refers to hospitals. Hospitals, not just in uh, Metro Manila, but it should be all over the country. And uh, hospitals and clinics and uh, other health centers that will be needed in the barrios, for example. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, 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 social infrastructure also refers to uh, education, uh, school Oops. buildings, yes. school buildings that are well equipped with uh, the uh, the you know the needed uh, uh, the, the needed the needed needed facilities, paraphernalia, and yeah. also that uh, you know that uh, the uh, the the. They, they are sturdy. They are not going to be easily blown by the typhoon. Okay? That's the right. second second priority. If, if, uh, I may, if I may cut in, Professor, uh, the Secretary, uh, regarding human development, uh, some people would say, well, it's going to be tough to do that because we have too many people, uh, unlike other countries that have started to to uh, regulate or control population growth, um, should population growth be an issue or is it part of the uh, development plan? Well, it should, it should have been a uh, population management should have been, uh, uh, should have been done early on, but we mm -hmm. have neglected that aspect of uh, population. That is why we are now the biggest population relative to land size in ASEAN. Indonesia has a bigger population than uh, the Philippines. We are 115 million now. Indonesia is something like 260 uh, million. But Indonesia has a huge land mass. Mm -hmm. So they, have, they, they really have a lot of resources, uh, natural resources that can be, uh, you know, that can that can feed that can provide mm -hmm. uh, services to the population, but we okay. have a limited land area. Uh, for example, Vietnam is only about ninety-eight million. Thailand is seventy million. Uh, Malaysia is only thirty-five million or thirty-three million, and uh, Myanmar is only fifty fifty million, some something like that. So we have the biggest population relative to the. Uh, land resource and the size of the land area so okay. so that, that you're right about uh, you know human development it means that we have to uh, we have to deal with so many people but uh, that, that, there's nothing we can do about that because we they, we have already the 100 110 million and yeah. you know the 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 uh, most of our population is uh, young uh, our median age is only 24, 23 or 24, median age of the population, meaning uh, one, one half will be uh, uh, below 25, uh, 24, 23, the, the rest will be above that. So it's, it's a huge, it's a huge uh, population. And uh, yeah. 
we have to manage it well so that you know uh, we don't have uh, zombies uh, growing well, growing well, up you know speaking of zombies and uh, managing uh singapore has spent several decades uh developing their educational program and training programs to create not just employable citizens but uh, cit- uh employees who are equipped for higher paying uh higher skilled jobs and not just menial jobs uh Apparently, we are also lagging in that, are we not, Secretary? We we are lagging because uh, we just cannot, we don't have enough uh, funds. You know, in terms of uh, spending per student, we have the lowest in ASEAN because we have a huge population. Our, those in basic education in public schools is uh, 30 million, 30 million are in basic education in public schools and then mm-hmm. we also we have pri- and others will be in private schools so uh we 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 have a we have a problem because spending per student is very important does, we does have SNED, del- yeah does SNED uh, cover uh content for education meaning you know uh, the impression generally is we are teaching our t- our students our children too many things there are too many lessons too many uh, stuff in the curriculum that ultimately are useless. Uh, does the NEDA make recommendations on uh, paring down or reducing the uh, uh, workload or subjects in schools? Well, it it, uh, it is because uh, NEDA is part of uh, the education, uh, the committee on education. Mm-hmm. But the the, the, the real the real uh, the real uh, implementer of uh, education is uh, DepEd. Department of Education, yeah, and they they are just ha- their hands full. They, their hands full are their hands are just uh, you know uh, full, more than yeah. full, so that uh, you know they they're having ha- uh, edu- our teachers are having a hard time okay. uh, providing well. uh, providing lessons and all that. The third uh, the third uh, uh, doctor uh, uh, Don uh, Cito Beltran is uh, infrastructure physical infrastructure but yeah. uh, I, I i i don't wa- i don't put physical infrastructure high priority because in terms of budgeting uh, it, but in terms of budgeting it is it, uh, it has the largest budget we have about 1.2 mil- trillion trillion pesos uh, allocated for infrastructure but the thing is Infrastructure can be handled by public-private partnerships. Correct. Meaning, meaning that the private sector can finance uh, physical infrastructure, and uh, with with the government, you know, uh, providing the uh, encouragement, the the uh, you know mo- uh, uh, regulation on yes. physical infrastructure. So, yes. I, uh, what my my thinking is. Uh, Half of that 1.2 trillion should go to human development, which is the first priority, and mm-hmm. also to good public hospitals, uh, good public uh, public education uh, uh, buildings, and uh, well equipped education. Uh, well, I suppose also housing. Uh, housing, oh yeah, of course, housing also. But as I've said, we 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 really have our hands full because we just have a lot of population. Mm-hmm. And we have we have we have limited resources. Okay, now uh, what? Uh, w- because of the, we have only a few minutes left, uh, Secretary. If you have, if you're given one wish, what would you wish for? Uh, yeah, my my my. As as I've said, my wish would be that uh, human development is uh, really given um, uh, adequate attention. Yeah, I mean, aside from the human development, because I think we've emphasized that, and you are very correct on that, because uh, everything starts with a child That's uh, right. and ends with the adult. But uh, aside from human development, is there something that, you know, you daily co- are confronted by or frustrated by that you wish could be improved on or could be achieved? Well, uh uh, our uh, yeah well uh, that that is something that uh, 
has to do with uh, you know people going to work and uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, mobility mobility across, yes mobility across uh, areas so that uh, if we don't have enough uh, well infrastructure we don't have trans enough transportation then mm -hmm. we have uh, we, we have uh, di this problem of uh, you know workers having to commute and they they uh, they, uh, they really spent long hours yeah, um, yeah. Mo mo uh, more more hours of the day than they they have for uh, you know staying at home and you know doing the needful things at home so okay, well yeah. yeah, Secretary, uh, I'm going to have to uh, end the interview now, but uh, I sincerely, humbly request uh, if you could give us, you know, one hour on one of these days, because, you know, you're the first person I've talked to in many years who actually talked about human development. Uh, it is a much, uh, it's a topic that needs to be addressed, to be discussed, and I'm glad that you initiated it and uh, we do hope you could make time for us in the near future and uh, let's really tackle all of this because uh, you have the insight both of uh, being a government official, former government official, a private sector advisor and of course in the academe. Uh, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, Don City Beltran, I'll be happy to, you know, to uh, oblige to that uh, request uh, if you uh, if you want me to yes of course sir thank you very much uh, secretary pernia uh, thank you too uh, for this okay uh, for this opportunity okay that is a uh, former net secretary ernesto pernia and uh, i have to reiterate lang po ang unang government official uh, uh, academe and private sector consultant na na-interview ko in so many years na talagang nag-emphasize sa human development. Magsimula sa sanggol hanggang sa tumanda, we need to take care of humans. Okay, uh, let's go to our closing uh, 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 exhortation for the week. It comes from the book of Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor uh, sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. That's today's agenda. Thank you very much. And once again, I apologize for our technical uh, glitches here. My bad, and we will fix it soon enough. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Please keep it here on One News. Thank you.